All right, guys, welcome to a review um, study guide. We'll have another review test. We had one earlier this semester. Well, this will be our second one. Um, in this uh, study guide, we're going to be reviewing exponential functions. First of all, we'll be talking about how to graph them. Um, we'll also be looking at um, how to solve equations that are exponential. After that, we'll review how to deal with um, powers that are fractions. We'll also learn how to solve equations that have fraction powers. We'll review a little bit about functions, like plugging numbers into them and also combining functions. So that's everything that we're going to talk about. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and do the even problems here. And um, let's begin. All right, so to graph an exponential function, um, first of all, you want to find your y-intercept. Now, when you have an exponential function, it's, it's usually going to be of the form like that. Um, the y-intercept is going to be the a value added to the c value. Then we're going to find a horizontal asymptote. The horizontal asymptote will always be y equals whatever the c value is there. Um, and then finally, we're going to get the shape out of it. The shape is based on two things. It's based on the a value, whether it's positive or negative, and the b value, whether it's bigger than 1 or less than 1. All right, so they all have horizontal asymptotes, so I'm going to draw some dotted lines to represent that. In this case, it looks like that. Um, in this case, it looks like that. And this box looks like that, and this one looks like that. All right, so with all that in place, I think we're ready to begin. Um, you can also go look at your unit 9 notes and find the parts where we talked about graphing if you want to see some more examples of this kind of stuff. All right, so let's begin here. So part A, we're going to start by finding our y-intercept, a plus c is 0. So that means that this function is going to be touching the uh, y-axis at 0. So I'll put a dot at 0. Next, we need to find the horizontal asymptote. That's part B. Y equals whatever the C value is, so negative 2. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line at negative 2. Then finally, part C, we can get the shape of the graph, and that's what I'll sketch next. So to do this, you need to look at the a value and the b value. So notice my a value is positive, and notice that my b value is greater than 1. So I'll be using this shape. So it's flat on the left, comes up, hits the dot, and then goes up on the right. And there's the graph of that function. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at another example. All right, so same question, same steps. The y-intercept is going to be the a value plus the c value. So my y-intercept is going to be at negative 4 this time. Next, we'll do the horizontal asymptote. equal to the c value, so it's uh, negative 1. So I'll draw a horizontal line going through negative 1. And then we're going to find the correct shape. So my a value is negative, and my b value is greater than 1. So I would be using this shape. So it's going to be flat on the left, hits the dot, and goes down on the right. 
and that's sketching exponential functions. All right. So we move on to a new topic now, solving exponential functions, or equations, I mean. Um, step one is going to be to get the bases to match. So both of these bases here can be written as powers of 5. I gave you guys a chart back in this lesson. Once again, it's in unit 9. I think it's 9.8 in particular if you want to look, um, if you forget your powers. But 125 is 5 to the third power. 25 is um, 5 to the second power. So we're going to multiply these powers together here. And here, after you do that, you're going to cross off the bases and you just solve the equation that's left. Um, in this case, we can, I don't know, add 9b on both sides to put the b's together. That'll leave nothing on the left side and 13b on the right. And then if I just divide by 13, 0 divided by 13 is just 0. So in this case, b equals 0. Okay? So get the bases to match. Multiply if necessary. And then from there, solve. Okay? I think we could probably do another one of these. Let's take a look at number 8. Okay, so I want to get these bases to match, so I'm going to change the 16, and I'm going to change the 64 first. Both of those can be written as powers of 2, so 16 is 2 to the 4th power, and 64 is 2 to the 6th power. Now, another thing was we don't like this fraction thing, so I'm going to change that to 2 to the negative 4, so it's no longer a fraction. You just make the exponent a negative, and then you can make it no longer a fraction. Now we're going to simplify. So these multiply together, so I get 2 to the 6x. And on this one, when we multiply these, you're going to distribute that 4 to both terms there. So you're going to get 2 negative 12x minus 8. From there, we're going to go ahead and drop out the bases. We're going to set those exponents equal to each other. And then we're going to solve. So I'll start by putting my x's together. And then I would divide. That can be reduced. Um, both 8 and 18 can be divided by 2. So if I do, I get negative 9 fourths would be my final answer for that one. All right, so that's the first two topics, uh, graphing exponential functions and solving exponential equations. Let's move on to a new topic now. We're going to talk about um, working with um, fraction powers. Um, when dealing with fraction powers, um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to change this into a radical. This number is the type of radical it will be. This is a third root. And then this number will be a power that we put on the outside. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take whatever's inside the radical and we're going to break it up. K to the ninth means we've got nine Ks being multiplied together. All right. Then what we're going to do is for every group of three identical things, we're going to take one out. So here's a group of three. So I could take a K out of the radical. Here's another group of three. So I could take a K out of the radical. 
and here's another group of three, so I could take another k out of the radical. Since there's nothing left in the radical, the radical just goes away, but we still have that five out there. Now these three k's here become k cubed, and then we can multiply these together to get our final answer, which is 15. Okay, so step one is to change into radical form. Step two is to break the inside uh, values apart. Step three is to take out your groups. Step four is to simplify. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number 12. Here's another one. Let's go ahead and rewrite it as a radical first. The root is a 3. The power is a 2. And for the 1,000, we're going to have to make a little tree chart here to help us out. 1,000 is 10 times 100. 10 is 5 times 2. 100 is another 10 times 10. And then 10 is 5 times 2. 10 is 5 times 2. Um, any number that we've broken up, we can ignore. So we broke up the 1,000. We broke up the 10. We broke up the 100. We broke up the 10 and the 10. But these numbers are the ones that are left. Those are the values that are going to go into our radical. So we have as follows here. I'm going to make this kind of long because we've got a lot of things to squish in there. I've got one, two, three fives. I've got one, two, three twos. And then I've got nine ends. And don't forget your power on the outside there. Now, I don't want you guys to think we're always looking for groups of three. It depends on whatever this number is. Now, since that number is a 3, I'm looking for groups of 3. But if it's a 4, you're looking for groups of 4. If it's if they don't even have a number here, it, that means we're looking for groups of 2. That's a square root. But I have 3, so I'm going to be looking for groups of 3. So for every group of 3, I can cross that group off and put that number outside the radical. There's another one. No more radical because there was nothing left inside of it. Let's go ahead and put all this stuff together here. 5 times 2 times n times n times n is 10n to the third. Now we're going to square it. 100 to the second power, I'm sorry, 10 to the second power is 100. And then if I, if I raise n to the third to the second power, you're just going to multiply those and you get n to the sixth. So the final answer is 100 n to the sixth power. All right, let's go ahead and move along to another topic. Um, so we're still dealing with fraction powers, but this time instead of just simplifying, we're going to deal with equations that have fraction powers in them. So here we go. Um, so you have, with these problems, numbers that are inside parentheses, and then you have numbers that are outside the parentheses. So what we want to do is we want to get rid of the numbers that are outside the parentheses first. So typically what you're going to do is you're going to do subtraction or, or addition first. In this case, it's subtraction because I have a positive 9, so we do the opposite, which leaves me with the following. The next thing you're going to do is, if there's a number right in front of the parentheses like that, you're going to divide by that number on both sides. In this case, the 4s will cancel, and I'll be left with 4 minus 12x in parentheses with that 3 over 2 power. And then 2048 divided by 4 is 5, 1, 2. 
The next thing we need to do is get rid of this power here. And the way that you get rid of the power is by raising both sides of the equation to the reciprocal power, meaning whatever the power you have, just flip it over. The reason we do that is because when you put these together, they cancel each other out. And so now we have 4 minus 12x is equal to 512 to the 2 thirds power. Okay. Um, now we're going to have to figure out what this 512 to the 2 thirds power is. So I'm going to do that on the side here. 512 to the 2 thirds power. That really means we're taking the cube root of 512 and we're squaring it. So to take the cube root of 512, we're going to have to break 512 apart. So what goes into 512? Well, I know 2 goes in there because it's even. Let's see. It goes in there. Uh, 2, 56. Do it again because it's another even number. 1, 28. Do that again because it's another even number. I'm running out of space here. I might have to move this piece. 64 is 8 times 8. 8 is 4 times 2. Now there's a lot of numbers here, so we've got to make sure we don't lose track of any. The 512 broke up, but the 2 did not. The 256 broke up, but the 2 did not. The 128 broke up, but the 2 did not. The 64 broke up. And both of these 8s broke up. This 2 did not break apart. This 2 did not break apart. But the 4s broke apart. And then we're left with these. So all these circled pieces here is what we'll keep. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There's 9 2s in there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're going to take out groups of three once again here. So there's two, two, two. Two times two times two is eight. And we still have our square out there, and that's 64. So after all that work, that's what this is equal to. 512 to the two-thirds power is apparently 64. So we can move on to the next step, which is 4 minus 12x is equal to 64. And then from there, we're just going to solve a basic two-step equation. x equals negative 5. All right. Take a look at another one here. Okay. Um, same steps, it's just another one. There is one interesting little twist that happens here, but I'll point it out when we get there. So the first thing we want to do is get rid of the numbers outside the parentheses. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to get rid of that negative 4 in the front by dividing both sides by negative 4. So I'm left with 3p minus 14 to the power of 2 thirds equals 16. Next, we want to get rid of that power. So I'm going to raise both sides to the reciprocal power. All right. So let's do that process there. 16 to the 3 over 2 means we're taking the square root of 16 and we're cubing it. Now, the square root of 16 is pretty simple. It's 4. 
Um, now you can still do the thing where you break it apart and take out groups of two if you wanted to. It would work. But I'm just going to know the square root of 16 is 4, and I'm going to leave it at that. 4 to the third power is 64. Now here's where something interesting happens um, that's different from the last problem. Since we're taking a square root, we get a positive and negative answer. So let me show you what that looks like then. We have 3p minus 14 is equal to positive 64 and also negative 64. And because of that, we're going to set up two separate equations. So we're going to have 3p minus 14 equals 64. And we're also going to have 3p minus 14 equals negative 64. And then we're going to solve both of these. So there's one answer. And there's another answer. All right, so that is our solving equations that have fraction powers. Let's go on to our next topic where we're going to talk about functions. Um, one thing I want you guys to be able to do is to, given a function, plug a value into it and get an answer. Pretty easy. Just replace the x's with the number that they give you, in this case, negative 3. And then all you have to do is simplify after that. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8. And there's our final answer. That's a breath of fresh air after those last two problems, huh? All right. Here's another type of problem um, involving functions. Um, I give you two functions, and then I ask you to combine them somehow. So this is telling me to take the f function, multiply it by 5, take the g function, multiply it by 3, and after that, add those things together. So we're going to do multiplying the 5 by the f function, multiplying the g function by 3. So let's go ahead and plug those in. The f function is 4t plus 4. The g function is 4t plus 2. And we just need to simplify. So in this case, we'll distribute. And distribute again. And then combine like terms. 20 and 12 are like terms. Those make 32t. 20 and 6 are like terms, so that makes 26. And there's our final answer. All right, let's do another one. Um, same stuff, just more practice, really. So in this one, they want me to take the f function and the g function and subtract them. So we're going to do the f of x function minus the g of x function. f of x is 4x minus 1. The g of x is x squared minus 3. Don't forget that when you're subtracting, you need to distribute the negative. So this is going to be 4x minus 1 minus x squared and plus 3. Notice the signs change in the second set because of the distributed negative. Um, my guess is they'll probably put the term with the biggest power in the front, followed by the term that has the next biggest power. And then these two numbers are just constants. They'll combine these because they're like terms. So if you have any like terms, put them together and then put your numbers in um, descending order from highest power to lowest. All right, last one for today. Um, 
So this is what we call a composite function. It's where you're plugging a function into another function. All right. Um, this guy is what I'm going to call the inside function. And then this guy here is what I'll call the outside function. So the first thing I like to do is I like to start by writing the inside function first. And then I'm going to write the outside function below it. But when I write the outside function, everywhere I see a T or an X or whatever variable they're using, I'm going to leave a blank there instead. So instead of H of T, I've got H of blank. And instead of T minus 1, I've got blank minus 1. So why did I do that? Because the next step is we want to plug g into the h function. So I want to take the g and drop it down inside these parentheses. So that would look like this. And sometimes you'll have a little bit of simplifying to do. In this case, we can combine the negative 2 and negative 1 to get negative 3, and we're all done. So in this one, you're plugging a function inside of another function. But that's it, so I'll leave the rest to you guys, and we'll see you guys later. Have a good day.